<laughs> What's going on guys and today I'm gonna bring you a nice PvP guide for Freedom Wars. So yeah, I really wanted to make this guide mainly cuz um, a while back I just haven't seen any guide whatsoever anywhere on the internet for PvP in Freedom Wars. All I see is PvE stuff. Uh, but of course I actually haven't checked like couple i haven't checked for a few weeks if if there's been made one but i'm just assuming that there still isn't one and i really just want to make my own because i want to say what i want to say so yeah anyways before i start i just want to say i am nowhere near a pro or anything like that on freedom wars pvp all right i just simply i guess you could say i know what i'm doing for the most part and this info that i'm even telling you is mainly it's like combined info that i've received from top PvP players that I've played with, uh, they've been giving me tips, and I just kept making sure I remembered it, and I was just working my way up to understanding PvP, I guess, completely, before I made this um, tutorial, so yeah, shout out to them, uh, but anyways, let's get started, because I, I got a good bit to say, so yeah, so, the first mistake I see new people that are doing PvP make all the time is they're always picking the Binding Thorn type. So unless you have a strategy in mind to use with the binding thorn types first charge move which is the mines unless you have a strategy with that don't use it all right don't even use a healing thorn unless you plan to use it effectively unless you plan to actually set up healing healing thickets and stuff so basically what I'm saying is when you first start out don't even use anything but the shielding thorn thicket or I mean yeah the shielding thorn uh, because what the first charge is a defensive boost that can actually gives you a little bit of an area so you can give that defense boost to your accessory and yourself and that is so useful and the other two don't do anything as useful as that the other ones are mainly for team you know team support and Whenever you're first doing PvP, you're not really worried about your team. You're worried about how you're going to be playing. So that's why you don't even need to do, you don't need to use any other thorn but the shielding thorn. So first, that's first things first. Pick the shielding thorn and you already look less newbie. <laughs> so, um, and also the second charge for the shielding thorn is really good. That wall, it is really good. It just helps a lot. So yeah, just use a shielding thorn thicket and you'll be good. So yeah, that's, that's step one. Next up we have augmentations augmentations are um th they can be mistaken a lot and they're also really important they're one of the most important things in freedom wars pvp and people mistake it a lot so something that i did when i first started doing pvp is i equipped all my attack augmentations right away i i just pounded on attack plus an attack and i was like oh i'm gonna kill everybody but don't use those attacking augmentations like the augmentations that for attacking they don't do much at all all right they don't give you that much attack because it would be kind of unfair for people that haven't unlocked attack plus augmentations so i mean and they don't want you to put an attack on and then you use adrenaline and you're just killing everything one hit so what they did they made it so augmentations um attacking augmentations don't actually boost your attack like much at all like they're a waste of space what you need is bulky you need augmentations that give you bulk health plus and health do stack so that's what i use and i have so much health uh so make sure you use at least one health uh buff because if you don't have a lot of health you get killed so fast and so easily and it just does not work but if you have a lot of health you'll be taking hits for days i'm telling you you are so bulky it's awesome um and you can see i also use defense sinners just to give myself a little bit of defense to accompany my massive health that i have and um yeah so those are the two main things like but you need you need bulky uh augmentations like health plus defense when i would rather you have put health health augmentation than rather than defense because defense also they don't do as much it's basically like um attack augmentations but it's better to use defense and uh, focus all your augmentations on being bulky. And then you can use your weapons and whatnot for, you know, attacking, whatever. And uh, other than that, then there's also thorn length. That's that's just like a bonus if you want it. You do not have to use it. Um, then you can use thorn master. It's a good augmentation for when you use light melees and even spears. Because you get able to cancel out your attacks and thorn leap. Uh, which makes you really safe. So say I I thorn leaf someone and I miss, and like I'm starting to attack them and I miss, I can automatically press a thorn again with thorn master and it cancels it out and I'm able to you know jab at them again and be able to pick up my slack or whatever that I miss. So 
the, the, uh, that's optional as well. You don't. You also don't have to use defense um, centers. You can also use Thorn Economy. Thorn Economy is really good, mainly because uh, whenever you you're in PvP, your Thorn Gauge drops so fast because you use it so much. Like whenever I first did PvP, I was so I didn't know. I remember my Thorn wouldn't work, and I was confused. And it was because my gauge ran out, and I was not used to it running out because you know in PvE you really don't use it that much that it runs out. So I, it was a surprise to me. So Thorn Economy can also be used, um, but. Other than health and buff, buffing yourself with augmentation, after you do that, then you're, you're free to do whatever other augmentations you want. So, yeah, just make sure you have health plus or bulky augmentations because those are big. So, yeah. Next up, we have combat items. So, there are like three must haves that you gotta have for combat items. There's you must have first aid kits, ammo packs if you're using a gun, and adrenaline. Of course, if you're not using a gun, you don't need ammo packs, so yeah, but whatever. But other than that, those three are must haves if you're using a gun and whatever. So if you're not using a gun, just have first aid kits and adrenaline. Um, so whether you want to use first aid kit plus and the regular ones is, I guess, it's up to you. Um, I like to do first aid kit because I, I use, you know, I'm healing a lot throughout the game and it really sucks if you have nothing to heal yourself. So I really just like having both of those. Um, and something optional is auto rescuator. You don't have to have it, but if you want to surprise your enemy and self revive yourself after they killed you, you know, it's, it's pretty good. It's actually, it's pretty good if you, if you use it at the right time, if you use it like at the wrong time and you revive yourself after you just got ganged up, you're going to revive yourself. They're going to kill you again. They're just going to give them another kill. So, and if you're doing team death match and it's, that's not very good. So it's up to you. I would not recommend it. If you're just new, you knew, you know, I would recommend it to you get better gear or whatever. If you're good, better at the game at PVP, then you can use it. But at, at the start, I wouldn't recommend but anyways and adrenaline adrenaline is so important this whenever you play if you ever played a top level player in pvp and they've just steamrolled you two hits with their spear and you're gone it's because of adrenaline because of course they have their good they have their good augmentation or they have their good um weapons but more is more or less because of adrenaline this thing is just so good uh it just helps you it makes your attack so much better it's it actually makes your attack better unlike the augmentations where attack plus doesn't do much the adrenaline actually does help because adrenaline is something everyone can get you know it's available to every player you know it's not hard to get it. so that's why it actually does do justice um i wouldn't recommend adrenaline plus because you can only carry i think it's two or three while the regular one you can carry five and that helps you use it all throughout the the match you know you'll be able to use five all throughout the match you'll be able to just you know do good so those are the common items that are really important so there you go now now on to the last one which is the weapon this one is a little bit confusing tricky long longer so yeah let's just let's get to it. lastly is the weapon choice um so i want to make this quick because the video is getting a little long so i'm gonna try to go a little bit faster anyways um if you simply want the best or the easiest weapon uh then i recommend the easy kodzi one for your gun and i guess a spear as your weapon um or you can just use a light melee weapon uh you know it's it's not too big of a problem i mean i guess it's not but anyways for pvp level doesn't exactly matter uh it does a little bit if you get to level seven and you get uh mods power up large and power up xl you're pretty much you're all right all right you're, you'll have good weapons they'll be able to you know do harm to people it's more of what mods you have in your weapon uh so Yes, like I said, level does matter to some extent, but it's nowhere near as important as your weapon mods. Uh, say someone has a level 10 weapon and no mods, does not mean they're going to kill you very easily. Uh, if you have a level 5 weapon with the right mods, you could probably kill them a lot easier. So, yeah, so in each weapon requires different mods and each mod will be useful for each, uh, for, you know, each weapon. You just have to think it out and look at what mods are available. So, for this tutorial, uh, we'll be using the easy Katsi number one as our example. And as in and as in terms of mods available, I will put a list in the description of the um it's like a list of items that add what mods. Uh so say it's like selenium or I mean it'll be like rune cable, whatever does adds power up XL. That's not true, but yeah, just that's that's the list. I will be making a mod um modding tutorial soon, so just wait for that as well. Stay tuned. So anyway, so anyway, let's get to the example. So the gun easy Katsi one is an automatic rifle. So just think automatics can be inaccurate with range. They won't have as much range as, you know, say other weapons like a sniper. And if it's fired faster, that'd be all cool. You know, if it's shooting out bullets faster, that could kill faster. It could, you know, seen as power up. So it'll, yeah, so that, that's the ones you want. So 
uh, like I said, there's a list of the mods in the description. So if you look, um, mods that you can get are effective range up, accuracy up, firing speed up. Those are so important for the easy cutscene. Those just make the, the gun so much more better. So those are the mods you want. Um, and preferably, if you can, get XL. Also, for the easy cutscene, carryable ammo and clip size mods are very useful for the gun as well, but they're not required, you know? They don't really make the gun better, they just make it e like easier to use, you know, because you have a lot of more ammo in your, in your clip, so that's why you use clip size. But something that is very important, um, carryable ammo and clip size mods are actually reversed. There's an error when with the localization and they mix it up. So, carryable ammo is actually clip size, and clip size is actually carryable ammo. So, make sure you keep that in mind because you might get carryable ammo and you see that your clip size is bigger. And you might be like, what the heck, I didn't want that or whatever. So, yeah, make sure you do that. So, and so yeah. Anyways, in terms of weapons, there isn't too many mods that matter a whole lot, like guns. Uh, but you do want critical damage up and you might want critical chance up because it helps critical damage is pretty important because if you do get a critical hit you want it to basically KO the guy if you if you just got a critical hit so yeah and as a note if you choose a light melee weapon the hawk shadow is probably your best bet mainly because it has a 10 hit combo and if you successfully follow up ground attacks after you've done a thorn leap attack so say you locked onto him you grabbed your thorn you leap attacked him and if you follow up with a ground attack with the Hawk Shadow, it's a guaranteed kill because of the 10 hit combo. You can do that 10 hit combo and each hit stuns them enough so that the next hit can connect. So, uh, yeah, so I believe you can see it on screen. It's square, square, square three times, triangle two times, square three times again, and then triangle to end it off. Um, and then that's a 10 hit combo. Also, uh, there's also a little glitch where if you time it correctly, uh, after the last, the third square and the second uh, batch, you know, so it's square, 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 triangle, triangle, square, square, square. If you time it correctly and you press triangle, you hold it in, it's actually going to do your charge attack. So this makes this combo really good. It's not very useful for, not very useful for PvP, but for PvE, it is really good. So the Hawk Shadow is like your best bet for light melee um because of the good combo but you can if you're not using a hawk shadow it has to be the other light melee i forget what it is that has a lot of attack it has to be really strong so that in whatever combo it can do it kills them so yeah either light hawk shadow or uh, a light melee that has a lot of attack so yeah those are those are your two options if you want to use that melee. that's all like you don't have to use it but those are just like the best ones so yeah Anyways, that's going to be it for this tutorial, um, longer than I want it to be, but I had to say all that stuff, that's all the stuff you need for Freedom Wars PvP, so, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time, there will be a modding video soon, so just stay tuned for that, so yeah, peace!